So what are the ethical problems with cloning? With cloning, your whole purpose in creating this new life is not to allow it to grow and survive. Your whole purpose is creating it just to destroy it. So you're creating a class of human beings whose only reason to exist is to be destroyed for research purposes. You grow it to a certain stage and then destroy it to cannibalize it for the various stem cell lines. However, supporters of cloning for research don't see this as a problem. I don't believe that it goes too far in ethical terms to use embryos up to a 14-day limit when they're still smaller than the size of a pinprick uh, in order to derive therapies to keep people alive. But there are those who think a lack of size or ability shouldn't affect an embryo's human rights. To take a very early human life, I would say, is, uh, and destroy it in order to help someone else is simply discriminating on the basis of age. We can't use human lives as a means to an end. Embryo at seven days, some people may call a ball of cells, but it's much more than that. It's an intact, functioning organism. And it looks that way because that's the way we all look at that stage of our development. It would be like saying that a baby, a newborn, is a ball of cells. Well, that's accurate in one description, but that too is a new organism at that stage of development. Uh, the difference being rather than just some skin cells or some cheek scrapings and so on, that little embryo, even at that early stage, has the ability to go on and continue developing if allowed to do so. But what about our duty to find cures for patients? What about their needs? If there is morality involved here. There's a moral obligation on us to, to pursue embryonic stem cell research if it can lead both to insights into the cause of disease and potential therapies. There is not the same right to life, the same right to the consideration of its interests of a very early embryo smaller than a pinprick as there is for um, a person who is suffering with a life-threatening disease. But no one would argue that a patient's rights are absolute. So how do we balance these against other ethical considerations? You know, it's not a matter of saying uh, we don't want people healed. We do want people healed. Uh, the question is how we do it and are we doing it in an ethical way. We don't let you kill your child even if your child's organs can save you. Uh, we consider that unethical. Uh, now that's an extreme example, but there are people in this debate that consider killing embryos the same as killing your child. So, it seems clear that our treatment of the early embryo is at the heart of the cloning debate. But are there other reasons to object to cloning? Evan Harris thinks not. Absolute respect for the embryo from the moment of conception is a religious view, it's not a mainstream ethical view in my opinion, and isn't a good enough reason to prevent this research being done in this country, and I think other countries will see that themselves in due course. Yet, there are significant numbers who do object to cloning for research for other reasons. One of the objections to cloning research is that it will lead to cloned humans actually being born, so-called reproductive cloning. But the cloning researchers say this won't happen. Reproductive cloning, as it's called, the actual implantation of a cloned embryo into a human female is expressly forbidden under international law and for very good reasons. Everybody says, oh, we're against making whole human clones. Uh, but you can't tell the difference between an embryo designed for stem cells and an embryo designed to become a baby. They're the same embryo. Once you've opened the floodgates to allow therapeutic cloning to take place, you've also opened them for reproductive cloning regardless of what any government might want to do to, to pass a law to stop reproductive cloning. If it took 277 attempts to produce Dolly the sheep, and it's even more difficult to produce a human clone, no one's done it yet, then how many hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of human beings have to die in the process of just getting there? But maybe this risk of research cloning being abused is worth taking. With any science, scientific development, knowledge is always a double-edged sword. There's nothing to stop someone trying this outside of the law. But that, to my mind, is not sufficient reason to restrict the technology involved in therapeutic cloning because of the great potential benefits that accrue to mankind.
But a key question is, do the benefits of this scientific sword outweigh the damage it could do 